so a lot happened with Halo last week. We had a toy reveal showcasing the Falcon. A huge Halo Infinite event was announced, as well as some amazing clips I wanted to share with you guys, and a whole lot more. So do you want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Last Week in Halo, the show that keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo that all happened last week, so it's a one-stop shop of everything you need to know, because I know not everyone can catch the news as soon as it drops. You know, we all have busy lives. So this video is like a one-stop shop to catch everything that happened last week. And we do release these videos every Monday morning, so you guys want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, especially since we're ramping up really close to the release of Halo Infinite. Make sure you tap subscribe right there, so let's get right into the content. So this first section I want to go into is more of the Halo stories that happen throughout the week and not necessarily like game related things but are related with Halo. The kind of miscellaneous stories I think that you guys really want to keep up with. One of those stories being that the Mega Constructs Halo UNSC Falcon has been revealed to the public. Now this is a super blurry image because it's kind of a leaked image showcasing a Falcon for Halo Infinite gameplay. Now they're on the Instagram page for Mega Constructs news, there is a higher res, but literally when I hit record, the site of Instagram went down. So this is the best blurry ass image that we have right here, but trust me, I looked over it. It does say Halo Infinite. It's still kind of blurry, but it does say Halo Infinite on it. And it showcases Noble Team down here, but down below. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the Falcon's going to be in Halo Infinite, but it just makes me think that you'd want to have that continuity at least in some capacity where if you're having Halo Reach characters, which the first season is about Reach within Halo Infinite, and you can't have Reach without the Falcon in my opinion, dude. It's gonna be huge. Like there's a huge emphasis on Reach for season one of Halo Infinite, which makes you think maybe the Falcon will return in some capacity. I mean, a boy can dream, right? And leaked at the same time as well, you have the Banished Garrison pack, which showcases a bunch of obviously banished characters. One of them though is the Grunt Mule, another person holding the plasma rifle as well. An Xbox Wire article recently released talking about some accessibility options for gamers out there as gaming becomes more popular. Gaming needs to become more inclusive, which is a great thing to see. They mentioned Halo Infinite here specifically because 343 took accessibility for people into consideration as well. With all these options right here being available for people, different kind of accessibility needs, which is a huge thing to have happen as gaming, like I said, becomes more popular, it needs to be more inclusive. Things like being able to customize your keys for controller and for mouse and keyboard as well, text-to-speech options, customize your menus and things like that as well, Absolutely huge for being it more inclusive for people to be able to play Halo Infinite. Halo Gear recently tweeted out some cool gear for you guys to pick up from Super Groupies US. And they have a pretty sweet line of gear you guys can pick up for yourselves, like a jacket, a backpack, a wallet, and a really nice watch. But some of the stuff is pretty dang pricey, guys. Like this watch certainly is not cheap. You gotta be a huge Halo fan to be willing to drop this kind of money on this kind of watch because they're selling it. For $240. This jacket right here, I wouldn't say is as absurd because it's $230 and it, a really nice jacket can run up to that range. So that's not crazy, but still pretty high priced. I really like this backpack because it's subtly Halo, you know? And this backpack will run you 150 bucks. But this wallet, dude, this wallet is where I'm just like, why is it so expensive? Because you look at this and it's like, yeah, it just kind of looks like a cool wallet. You might even see it like Hot Topic or something like that. It's nothing too insane or too crazy or anything like that. It doesn't really do anything remarkably besides just being like kind of like a well-made wallet. This wallet will run you $110. How does a wallet become that expensive, dude? I don't understand it, but hey, if you guys really want it, there's an option for you there. And now guys, we finally have a new thing to complain about with Halo Infinite, that being the plant physics. We went from the fruit physics to now the plant physics. This person went into like a custom game right here and just started walking through this plant saying how undetailed things are within Halo Infinite and saying how this game is not gonna be a good game. The detail just isn't there for his immersion, I guess. Um, if you're that concerned about the plant physics, I guess we just have to delay the game indefinitely. Like we're just never gonna get Halo Infinite guys because we can't. The plant physics aren't there. The fruit physics aren't there either guys. I think we just need to delay Halo Infinite again like till 2025 or something like that. Just, you know, we need to make sure that the detail is there for Halo Infinite for the pure immersion of the game. And of course, you guys know that I absolutely am joking. Um, I really couldn't care much about the plant physics. I don't really care about the fruit physics. You know what I care about? Gameplay. 
I care about how the guns shoot. I care about the map design. I care about the weapons and also the vehicle plan, things like that. Like, I think people are sometimes get like too hyper focused on these little tiny details, just trying to get clicks on the internet, just because obviously negativity does really well on the internet. I think they're just trying to like search for clicks, be like, look at the new thing that I found that something could be, people could be outraged about. And that's just ridiculous. This next section we're talking about the huge Halo Infinite event that has been revealed last week for us guys and it's a major event happening in Raleigh, North Carolina. And a lot of people are super excited about this event. This is the first Halo Infinite event that's finally been announced for us guys and it's just crazy epic to see this happening. It's actually going to be an in-person event as well happening on December 17th through the 19th. And the official HCS team put up this blog detailing everything you're going to need to know about this event when it comes to like the prize pool, the dates, how to get tickets, and also COVID protocols as well. Super important to know. A really great thing they mentioned here is that there is a partner team code situation happening where if you're gonna buy tickets for this event, which tickets are close to selling out right now, actually guys, but if you're gonna buy a ticket, make sure you utilize some of these team codes right here so you get 10% off your purchase and that 10% goes to that team as well. And this event does have a prize pool of $250,000, so HCS is not playing around this is going to be a insane event and i just wish i could go but i have a family vacation plan that same weekend and they do talk about covid protocols because obviously we're still in the middle of a pandemic here guys and they do mention that you need to have proof of vaccination as well as a photo id each time you enter the venue if you don't have proof of vaccination you can show a negative covid test that's within the last 72 hours of you entering the event with a photo id every time you enter the venue so i'm glad to see that 343 as well as the event itself also taking people's health into consideration now one of the most dominant halo pros out there snakebite tweets this out talking about how this first LAN event is literally happening the week after the release of the game. And he's saying, I hope it doesn't really impact seeding for the 2022 season because like the game just released. And if you're gonna have this event be part of like the seasonal point totals for your seedings and things like that, it could really affect how people play the game as well. And also just, it's so, it's so new and fresh that people might not be able to bring their A game to the first event. The head of HCS, Tashi tweets out saying, we are definitely keeping that in consideration can't share more at the moment, but all will make sense once we can reveal how everything fits together. So we do have more news coming later on. So if you guys don't remember, yeah, there was a flight that happened last weekend. We've got a chance to play some BTB, which was really freaking cool. I streamed it a ton on my Twitch channel. If you guys want to follow there, we do stream every Tuesday and Thursday evening. I did put up a video right here talking about all my thoughts about BTB guys and ultimately TLDR or TLDW didn't watch. Uh, BTP is awesome. But this section, we're gonna be talking about everything involving Halo Infinite news beyond the flight itself as well. We're talking about like some Rockstar promotions that just came live, how to submit some tickets on when that window closes, how mouse and keyboard handling might be changing over time, as well as the multi-kill timers have made a big change. So what can we expect now that the flight has been closed? Well, Unichat goes on Twitter here, kind of giving a little bit better explanation of what exactly is happening here, saying thanks for joining us for the final day of the Halo Infinite tech preview. Two more notes before calling it a night. Yes, you can feel free to delete your build, which I didn't last time, but in case you feel like doing it, you can if you want. I kind of feel like this might be the last flight, guys, before the release of the game, but hopefully we get another chance to play. And also a very important thing, guys, to help out 343 are surveys, which will be sent out a subset of Halo Insiders will start rolling out, well, this morning. And those surveys are crucial, guys. So if you get one of those, Please make sure to fill them out. It really does help out 343. And talking about helping out 343, you have the chance to submit tickets to the support site of Halo Infinite before 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on October 6th. So you have two more days before that officially closes out. So I'm sure you guys saw this, this news section or just like this information section here covering up your squad, right? When it comes to playing Halo Infinite's flight and you're like, dude, I want to get a good picture of my squad. How do I do that with that in the way? Well, Sketch, the community director, actually replied to this tweet saying, PSA, you won't have news blocking your fire team view in multiplayer area when it launches. This is a temporary UI setup for the multiplayer tech preview build. News will live on a screen above this as part of the main menu, which is not in this build. So good to know this is not the final UI. This is just a build UI for just this flight. So great to see that. So prominent commentator for the Halo community Golden Boy put out a video on YouTube and also on his Twitter talking about how he felt that mouse and keyboard just 
didn't really feel that great. And the community manager, Unishek, actually replied to this, saying that the PC has actually had confirmed that they have improved the performance, hitching, latency, aiming, and more that they've already made internally for PC players. So for all you mouse and keyboard players, just keep in mind that things are going to continually be improving. They're going to keep working on it. Just the release of the game is not going to be how the controls are going to be feeling for the rest of the game. Halo Infinite's a live service and it's meant to be updated continuously. We also find that the multi-kill timers have certainly made a big change with Halo Infinite. A little bit more forgiving, actually. Our favorite montage boy, Mint Blitz, talks about this, asking Unishek some more clarification on how the timing actually works when, between multi-kills. Unishek replied here, saying, For clarification, the multi-kill timer begins at 5 seconds, parity with Halo 5, then increases 0.25 seconds per earned multi-kill, with a hard cap at seven seconds at the top. So what does that mean exactly? Well, let's take a look. So the way it's gonna work for you to get multi-kills within Halo Infinite is that we get your first kill and then five seconds later, you have a chance to get your second kill, which will give you a double kill. And then the third kill for a triple kill will be 5.25 seconds, 5.5 seconds, 5.75 seconds, 6 seconds, 6.25, 6.5, 6.75, and then to get a killing air, you have 7 seconds to finish off that killing air. Now, a lot of people have voiced their opinions saying that they're not a big fan of this change, saying that because, well, the reason why these streaks are so cool is because they're really hard to get, and essentially 343 made them a little bit easier to get in Halo Infinite, but in my opinion, I think we have to wait and see how this actually plays out. I didn't really see a whole lot of people getting killing airs on Twitter, so I feel that the this bonus generosity it's just gonna help out people because i've seen so many times where people like their kill timers time out because they've killed too many people but we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out and for the last bit of halo infinite news guys we had a new reveal of a new promotion for halo infinite and that's with rockstar energy this promotion actually is really cool because you get some in-game content as well as some double xp to help you progress through your battle pass or earn your unlocks even faster so the first bit of in-game content guys you get to see is the ma40 assault rifle coating and like it's gold and black and guys it honestly looks pretty sick i'm gonna have to buy some rock stars just to get this coating because it looks so cool you also get the same thing for a warthog as well gold and black as well and as well you get in a razorback option as well from the circle k codes as well there's some circle k and there's some amazon codes you can check out as well so to get more details on how this whole thing works, guys, you can see how each code gives you double XP, which should be another 30 minutes of double XP, ultimately adding up to 120 codes you can have, which equates to 60 hours of double XP. So you can guys grind through your battle pass, get your unlocks way faster. Here are your code options for you Canadian viewers out there. Now, Amazon and Circle K have some special offers where if you get one code from Circle K, you get five challenge swaps as well as the Razorback coding. Amazon offers you three challenge swaps. So ultimately some really cool in-game content and some double XP for you guys to earn. If you're gonna be drinking energy drinks, go ahead and do that. Just don't drink too many because that's obviously a health hazard. And for this last bit, guys, I wanted to kind of go over some of the crazy clips that came over last week because obviously people have done some really unique, exciting things when it comes to playing Halo Infinite finally. So I wanted to share that with you guys. This first clip here showcases how you can just yeet the flag across the map. Like this is just absolutely insane kind of stuff you can pull off with the sandbox now i'm not sure if this stuff needs to be patched or this is just really good teamwork um but you know this is something just to really showcase that like yeah you can do this kind of stuff with the sandbox of halo infinite stuff we've never been able to do before in halo um i kind of feel like it should be patched but you know we'll just have to wait and see how 343 feels about it and how the community does and if this really does become a widespread issue or if it's more just kind of like really well coordinated teams kind of thing here on Reddit, they showcase a tiny hog. Yes, a tiny warhog came in and spawned. Look, they actually got a chance to jump around and f drive this warhog. And look how tiny this thing is. Like, honestly, I hope that this glitch actually kind of stays in the game in some capacity. Like, we can have like mini hog races for like custom games or something like that, like Mario Kart style or something. I saw the same thing with a mongoose as well, which I just thought like, dude, if we can have like little mongoose races, like this would be absolutely hilarious. I just thought that was something funny to share for you guys. Now, the former art director. Marcus Leto has been working on the free time just kind of recreating some of the CE aesthetics but in Unreal 4 engine and here you get to see a really cool high-res Master Chief created by the guy who made the Master Chief look the way he did in the first place so this is like probably the most true and most accurate high-res version of Master Chief you could possibly find on the internet because it's from the guy who made Master Chief man you can see he made some really cool detail options like you can see like the wiring and like the buttons kind of stuff like in the back of the armor set as well like this just looks 
so freaking cool and it's really cool to see that like the guys who originally made halo are still really into halo in this video guys is halo infinite in real life this is actually from iceland about the basalt pillars as well uh you can definitely tell it took some influence from natural occurring uh, things for halo infinite i just found it so cool that like this real life version of halo infinite which is supposed to be looking so sci-fi can be found here on earth actually and this Twitter user here was uh, having some issues trying to take out this bot right here. And uh, he said he's having an aneurysm. And you gotta wait till the end of this clip for the ultimate clip troll. Because as you can see, he just cannot land a shot on this bot. But wait till the very end. This is just like what made me laugh so hard. Because the bot is straight trolling this guy right here. Like, stand still. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You can see that it's just, just hilarious. Like sometimes, you know, these bots, they can strafe really well, man. And uh, sometimes you just miss shots, especially if you're playing on mouse and keyboard. And guys, the impossible has happened. Someone actually hit max rank on the MCC, saying that they've been purely grinding for XP for the past two years, guys. And we finally had the first person hit max rank in the MCC. I did not think this was actually possible, but apparently it is. So those were all the major stories that happened within Halo of last week. Guys, if you wanna stay updated with Halo, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you tap that like button. It really does help out the video and channel get a better place within the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and the informational videos we've been uploading daily about. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.